On September 26, the Federation of Cypriot American Organizations held its 2019 testimonial dinner in Queens, New York, before a full house of guests, dignitaries, local officials and high-ranking members of the Cypriot and Greek governments, including the President of Cyprus, Nikos Anastasiadis, and the Foreign Minister of Greece, Nikos Dendias. As it is the tradition, the Federation honored two distinguished members of the Greek Cypriot American community for their contributions to Cyprus, as well as for their achievements in their profession. Dr. Simeon Simeonidis, an internationally renowned and accomplished attorney in law reform, was honored with the Life Achievement Award, and Peter Kakoyanis, also an attorney, with the Community Service Award. Reference to the life and contributions of Dr. Simeonidis were made by the Vice President of the Federation, Margarita Irakleos Likas. The esteemed attorney who lives in Oregon, among other distinguished appointments throughout his career in 1999, was elected Dean of uh, William Mead uh, University College of Law in Oregon and served in that capacity until 2011. Since then, he holds the Alex L. Parks Chair in Law. He has published 27 books and some 135 articles in various languages, drafted various reform laws, provided legislative advice to the EU Parliament and several countries, including Cyprus, while he stands out for his pro bono work as a consultant to the law firm that represented Cyprus in recovering and repatriating the Canacaria mosaics, which were illegally removed from the Canacaria church in Litrangomi, Cyprus, by art smugglers during the 1974 Turkish invasion and later sold to an Indiana-based American art dealer. The Lifetime Achievement Award recognizes the exceptional achievements of individuals in their respective fields of work and whose accomplishments have made long-term impact on others. In accepting the award, Dr. Simeonidis, after thanking the Federation, referred to his early life experiences, which led him to his profession and his passion to advocate and support legal matters pertaining to Cyprus and its cultural inheritance. Dr. Simeonidis, I am very much impressed with your life story, but I'm also um, touched that you lost your father uh, who was a fighter during 1955? Um, uh, no, my father was a prisoner of the. Was a, sorry, he was a prisoner, but, you, but you lost your brother, right, yeah. who was kidnapped by the Turks, right. and you discovered his bones here, 50 uh, years later. 50 yeah. years later. Yeah, that yeah. must have been horrible. Yeah. It was horrible, but it was also a closure. You know, we, we felt lucky that we found him. There are so many other families that have not found their, their uh, loved ones. So. I'm thankful that we did find him, and in the end there was a closure, and I could even recognize him. Uh, so, yeah, it's a sad story, uh, but, but uh, there are so many families that are waiting, and, uh, and it's one of the, it's a, it's a tragedy that there are still so many missing. So tell me a little bit more about yourself and your work. You, you are an attorney, right? right? Uh, and you live? I live in Oregon now. You live in Oregon? For the last 21 years, and before that, 20 years in Louisiana, and, and so on. So, so tell me about your achievements as far as Cyprus as an attorney. You've done some incredible things, briefly. Well, I, uh, I helped the law firm that uh, represented Cyprus in trying to recover the mosaics that the Turks looted from a church in the occupied area. Canagaria. exactly. And so we won so you're, that. So you're the man behind that? No, I, I help the you strategy help. on okay, because okay. I my specialty is conflict of laws and comparative law, and when these things are moved from one country to the other, there are many laws that are involved, yes. and my specialty is to tell them which one will govern. So I help in that regard, and then I represented Cyprus in Brussels when Cyprus got the presidency of the European Union Council. I spent six months there, working on several matters of civil law. And then I represent Cyprus in the, in the Hague Conference, which is a, an organization at the Hague that drafts international conventions. And I made sure that Cyprus's interests were protected. So that's, that's, that's one of the things. It happens to be my specialty. I love what I do. And I was helping in Cyprus, my country, so, you know, it's a... And on a volunteer basis, just like me. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this on a volunteer basis <laughs> all my you? life. Uh, and, and finally, um, your thoughts about the Federation and the award this evening? 
Oh, the, I'm, I'm so glad to see such a vibrant organization here in New York. Uh, you know, I know a lot of other immigrant communities uh, for other reasons, and I think this is a very good organization. It's very active. And, and as for the award, I mean, as I said, it's the sweetest recognition, but it comes from your own people. You know, I got a lot of awards in China and Japan and, and Asia. And it's not the same when you get it from your own people. So it's very sweet, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that they found me somehow. And yeah, okay. <laughs> Kiriakos Papastilianou, the president of the Federation, referred to the life and contributions of Peter Kagoyanis, another accomplished and distinguished attorney from New York and a member of the law firm Eisman Levin Lerhop and Kagoyanis PC, who has been actively involved in various community organizations and who has also provided pro bono legal counsel to several national and local uh, nonprofits. The Community Service Award, as Mr. Papastilianu noted, recognizes individuals who have contributed outstanding volunteer service to their community by dedicating their time and work and uh, who promote uh, the ideals and values of Hellenism. The contributions of Peter Kakoyanis fully represent uh, this award and we're very happy and proud uh, that he's our friend and supporter, the President of the Federation further noted. Mr. Babastilianu also talked briefly about the mission of the Cyprus Federation, which presently has 28 chapter members nationally. Apart from providing support to its member chapters, the Federation also promotes good social causes, philanthropic endeavors, and cultural activities. Mr. Kagoyanis, in accepting the award, uh, also thanked the Federation uh, and uh, he focused his remarks on volunteerism, stressing that it is something that comes from the heart and the sense of love and duty for others. My good friend Peter Kagoyanis. How are you, Ayla? I am so proud of you. You're very kind to say that. <laughs> you, you lead the example of how to get it done right, and I followed. <laughs> no. Um, I've known you for so long, and it was well overdue. Uh, how do you feel? I, I know you feel. Is, I, I know I you am, feel I very am, humbled. Right? I, I am overwhelmed that the number of people who came out to see whether or not I fell flat on my face or not. But I was glad to see that it turned out as well as it did. You have, and your program have always been consistently in the path of, of where we have to go as a community, being in the forefront. And it's easy to follow in those footsteps. And I thank you for what you do because you're there year after year, day after day. So my mission is to get someone to follow me like we follow you and your efforts, and that's how we will succeed. And we've heard our good friend Philip and his vision. His vision is what we need to have the reality. What's going on now, we're smart enough to embrace Cyprus, Greece, Israel, and all the other countries in the Middle East so that we have a bastion of strength and not one voice. And that's where I think we're moving, and that's where our youth are coming to. You know, you gave a very um, strong message uh, this evening about volunteerism because uh, you've been honored uh, for all the time uh, and money that you have been volunteering uh, all these years for Cyprus, for, the, for Greece, and for the good causes of the, our community. So. Um, Let's, um, I, I just want you to, to repeat that for the camera once again. Well, what, what, what vo is volunteerism to you? Volunteerism is, is not treasure. It's time and talent. And the talent is, is something, and time is something you can never recover. So when you give up your time to your family and friends, it's a real sacrifice. It has to be for something meaningful. And the cause of Cyprus the, represents freedom democracy, religious rights, all these things are fundamental as an American, as Philip Crystal always says. This is something that we recognize and that our children are now recognizing, and we're at the stage where we need to stand up and not sit in the back of the bus, as I said, and not apologize for being correct, you know, both democratically, religiously, and politically. And I'm very proud that Cyprus now is, is at the table where it should be. And Peter, once again, Congratulations and many more. Thank you, Elena. Thank you for your leadership and how you teach us where to go. Nikos, congratulations. Very well organized once again. You're the chairman uh, and it's, uh, you have a lot on your shoulders this evening. You have a lot of guests, a lot of dignitaries. The president is here of Cyprus, the uh, foreign minister of Greece. 
And you have selected uh, two very worthy uh, recipients uh, to be awarded today. Um, tell me a little bit more about the decision to uh, honor these two, uh, Mr. Kakoyanis and Dr. Simeonidis. Thank you very much, Elena, for your congratulations. Uh, actually, it was uh, a team effort. Uh, me, myself, and the rest of the committee, we tried to set this uh, nice event tonight. We select Dr. Simeonidis, uh, one of the uh, best uh, professors that we have, uh, Cypriot America professor that we have here in the United States, uh, for, for his uh, you know support and everything that he has done for Cyprus, and also. Uh, we select one of our own, uh, our, our lawyer, uh, our friend, Peter Kagoyanis, which is uh, around for many years. He's always there for us, and he's actually he's one of us. And, uh, and volunteering all volunteer the time. Volunteer all the time, and uh, he never said no to us. Every time that we need uh, an attorney to give us an advice, he's there, and also he never charged. <laughs> That's the main thing for yes. a non-profit he, such as the organization. Yeah, he's always there for us, and uh, we appreciate that. And as you see, the president of Cyprus are here, the foreign minister of Greece and Cyprus are here, and uh, I would like uh, to thank everybody from Cyprus that came to this event and uh, to assure them one more time that our community, our Romania, is here for Cyprus and Greece to support uh, all their efforts for Cyprus, free Cyprus, and also to have... Uh, Ibiros, Macedonia, and all those uh, uh, right areas, areas uh, back to our motherland, Greece. Yes. And you got a lot of praise tonight, the Federation, from the President and the other speakers, for the fact that you've been attracting the youth, and congratulations, you have Nebomak, and you have the new uh, generation that they're going to carry on the torch, right? Yeah, the torch, you have to give it to the Nebomak and to the uh, youngsters that uh, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's a passion, but for them, uh, it's, uh, a it's, it's, in, it's, it's a mission and it's in their future. Uh, we want to have, uh, have them, uh, we need them also to come and help us to continue the fight for Cyprus, to continue to, to give the torch to the new generation for the Greek values and the Hellenism. Thank you, Nico. Keep up the good work. And, and you too. We'll, Keep yeah. up the good work, Elena. Thank you for coming here today and uh, support our uh, community. Thank you for everything you have done. Mr. Diamandaris, welcome back to your base. Deputy Minister of? Foreign Affairs uh -huh. for the Greeks abroad. Yes. You are the perfect man. And I know you're going to take care about the uh, voting issue. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to your uh, audience. We believe very strongly that the Greeks abroad should be voting in the Greek elections. And they should be voting from the place where they live. You don't have to go to Greece to vote, like I did some time ago. So we're working very hard to accomplish this. I think it's about time. I think it's ethical. I think it's right. And I think it's overdue. Of course. And we'll try to definitely do it. And briefly, how's life in Greece? Life is, in Greece is very good, actually. I love the weather. I love the, the country. I miss New York also. I miss my mm -hmm. children. And I, <laughs> I miss, as you know, I lived in New York for 50 years, so it's a little uh, yes. hard. But I'm excited about the opportunity that I have to do something good for the relations between Greece and, and the Greeks abroad. Yes. This is what sustains me. This is what I intend to do, and this is what I promise to do. I promise to work very hard yes. to improve those relations. I'm sure you do, because you lived here and you know our needs. But uh, also, you've been accompanying the Prime Minister on his first visit to New York. Uh, is there anything you want to share with us? Are you, ha are you satisfied? Is he satisfied with his visit? He's very satisfied. He has a number of very good meetings. And we're especially satisfied... <coughs> Excuse me. That last night in Astoria, Stonagio Dimitrio, we had a huge audience, yeah. audience. I haven't seen such a large audience for many, many years in New York. So this is a true satisfaction because people respond to the Prime Minister. They believe in the Prime Minister and he will not disappoint them. Yes. And then today we had a, a huge, another big meeting with business people from the communi community 
and friends of Greece. So overall, it's a great visit. He loves it. He enjoys it. He promotes a Greece, a different Greece than it used to be before. Yes. And it, I think he makes it so and very proud. He speaks English. <laughs> he speaks English like uh, an American born almost. Yes, yes. And finally, about tonight's event, uh, we have two honorees. You're here at the uh, Cyprus Federation of America. A few words about tonight's event. First of all, I'm happy to be here. As you know, I've been a very close friend of a lot of Cypriots and in Cyprus and been fighting for it for many years. Uh, I'm here to represent the Prime Minister as well, but I'm also extremely happy and proud to be here with my good friend Peter Kakoyanis. He's honored. I know Peter for many years. I love him. I'm proud of him. And I want to congratulate him on his big honor tonight. Thank you, Mr. Diamandaris, and, and, and all the best to you. The awards ceremony was preceded with some important speeches relating to the protracted Cyprus problem and the ongoing efforts of the Cyprus uh, government uh, with the support of the Greek Cypriot American community in finding a just and viable settlement that will reunify the island. His Eminence, Archbishop Elpidophoros, who was recently appointed to lead the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, greeted the event, offering his congratulations and his blessings to all in attendance, as well as to the two honorees. His Eminence also conveyed the warm blessings and greetings of the Ecumenica Patriarch Bartholomew. His All Holiness, he stressed, has uh, Cyprus very close in his heart and prays for a just, peaceful and lasting solution, as well as for the day His All Holiness can visit the island reunified. Philip Christopher, President of the International Coordinating Committee Justice for Cyprus, whose strong advocacy for the reunification of the island started immediately after the 1974 illegal Turkish invasion, in a passionate speech stressed that the Greek Cypriot American community fully supports the efforts of President Anastasiadis for the resumption of uh, the talks uh, to reunify the island based on UN resolutions and EU principles and values. Our community, Mr. Christopher further stressed, stands firm and will not cease its efforts until a lasting and peaceful solution is found which guarantees stability on the island based on fundamental freedoms, human rights and EU principles and values without any guarantor powers or interventions from other countries, especially Turkey. That we come from the birthplace of democracy and we have not forgotten the Hellenic values and ideals and we are proud of the fact that we are American citizens in the greatest democracy in the world. So my friends, the work goes on, the hope endures, and freedom for Cyprus will never die. Thank you all very much, and God bless you. Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Dendias, uh, in his uh, greeting message, talked about the close collaboration the governments of Greece and Cyprus have. Our governments, he said, work hand in hand with an aim to resolve the protracted Cyprus problem in line with United Nations resolutions, EU principles and values, and also to confront the ongoing aggressive provocations of Turkey within the exclusive economic zone of Cyprus and of the Aegean, as well as Turkey's most recent provocation and threat to reopen and occupy the fenced off town of Varosha in violation of long-standing UN Security Council resolutions. Cyprus President Nikos Anastasiadis, the guest speaker at the event, reiterated what he had said a few hours earlier during his very firm speech before the 74th session of the UN General Assembly, in which, with concrete facts, he responded to Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, stressing that it is not the Greek Cypriot side that has ill intentions for the resolution of the Cyprus problem, as accused by Erdogan from the same UN podium, but it is Turkey. We aspire to establish an independent and sovereign state free from the presence of occupation troops without the anachronistic treaty of guarantees, a state with a robust system of security based on the charter of the UN and the treaties of the EU, and a state free from foreign dependencies in which all decisions will only be taken by Cypriots. This is our goal, and for this, we are being accused by the Turkish president 
that we have ill intentions for the resolution of the Cyprus problem, President Anastasiadis noted. The President also pointed out that as the Greek Cypriot side is trying to resume the negotiation process, Turkey is aggressively provoking and blackmailing the Cyprus government. Turkey, he said, uh, violates uh, the sovereign uh, exclusive economic zone of the Cyprus government, blackmails that if the Cypriot government continues with its energy program, there will be consequences and furthermore also blackmails neighboring countries and energy companies who collaborate with the Cypriot government. Recently, Anastasiadis said that his government has also been confronted with an increasingly aggressive positioning of the Turkish military and an escalation of violations in the buffer zone. And furthermore, Turkish officials have made announcements to illegally reopen and resettle the fenced-off town of Arosha, which according to UN Security Council Resolutions 550 and 789, following the 1979 high-level agreement between the leaders of the two communities, the town can be only reopened and settled by its lawful inhabitants under the auspices of the United Nations. Regrettably, uh, President Anastasiadis said, uh, these actions by Turkey severely undermine the aim of having the required environment for meaningful negotiations. In concluding, President Anastasiadis uh, stressed that the Greek Cypriot uh, government cannot accept gunboat diplomacy, blackmail tactics, and Turkey's attempts to force uh, the Greek Cypriot side to negotiate under duress. The dignity of our people, he said, dictates not to do so.